Hi there, my name's Talissa and this is my partner Jonathan. We are professional ballroom dancers. Today we're going to be talking about our experience as beginner dancers. Uh, we thought we'd start off by essentially sharing uh, what our first dance lesson was like. <laughs> so tell us, you start off first. Let us know. And to be honest, I actually haven't ever heard this story and I don't think you've heard my story, so. Well, the <laughs> point, the point of this both, video both is, of the point of this video is to help inform you on the lessons that we learnt from that experience, not just that experience alone. So, uh, if you are a beginner dancer, maybe you've just had your first dancing lesson, or maybe you're, you maybe you've always wanted to, to, to try ballroom dancing and you'd like to have a first lesson, then hopefully you'll find this video uh, maybe entertaining and also a little bit informative. Uh, the only thing that I do know about Talissa's first dance lesson was that it was actually quite similar to mine, which is that it was a group lesson. So uh, I think we both went to our local dance studio and I think maybe our parents were involved. Definitely. I, I definitely know my parents were involved. <laughs> I think I was uh, maybe 10 years old when I had my first lesson. Was yeah. that when, how old you were? I, I was about eight. I was eight years old, I think so. Yeah, we both were enrolled in a group class. I actually had my brother and some friends that were there with me. Um, did you have anyone? It was my brother as well. Yeah, brother. I went with my brother. Yeah, so I think my... my you tell your story. <laughs> well, so my lesson was actually a boring lesson. It was tango. And I remember the teacher... Oh, it started with tango. Yeah. Not an easy one to I'm, start with. I'm pretty wow. sure it was tango. And... Uh, I, actually, my grandparents were in the studio as well. They were watching, so it was a big family event. Grandparents love when we start ballroom dancing. <laughs> well, the funny thing is that I was not very good in my first lesson. And, well, I think no one is particularly good in their first lesson, but uh, I think my- I thought you were born like this. <laughs> well, you will have people believe. <laughs> so, my family were actually, they thought I was not gonna be up for the challenge and they thought it was probably a waste of time for me to continue um, but I did continue not necessarily by my own choice my parents wanted me to continue but I think that's an important lesson in its own right that if you don't if you don't uh, feel very confident straight away or if you don't look very good straight away don't give up because mm. uh, most people uh, do not find boring dancing very natural I mean, there are there are some people. It's not a natural thing. There are some people out there that are just naturally talented. They're in rhythmical. Things, yeah. or they can pick up music. Or yeah. they remember the steps very easily. Mm -hmm. But uh, I didn't. From memory, I didn't think I did anything, any one of those things particularly well. Um, but yeah, I think that was kind of my first experience of. I didn't really have my choice of a dance teacher or a dance partner. Um, Actually, my parents chose my first dance partner for me that was organized, and that was actually a successful partnership as well. But um, I, I didn't have much much say in so it. So was that your main lesson, your main takeaway? Uh, well, I, I guess probably my main takeaway was that group lessons were a very good way to get exposure to dancing and to learn in an environment where there's less pressure on yourself, I think, mm. would be would be the lesson, and that there has to be a natural uh, ev evolvement, evolution uh, to private lessons and to finding a partner, and that if you stay in the group lesson situation in that environment for too long, it could be not very good for improvement. I think that if you want to improve faster, that you need to put yourself in a, an environment where better people are in. How long do you think you were in that, um, you were in the group lesson environment before you switched to private lessons or mm. before you got a partner? Probably, probably a few months. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Um, but again, I was quite young, so yeah. that time frame wasn't really a decision. May not be but accurate. that was that's probably a pretty good time frame to go off. But I'd also, say. Um, the the initial. Um, 
process for starting to do competitions and to kind of take the first step into uh, progressing your dancing is to do what we call in Australia, which is uh, medals. And I think that's a, a relatively universal thing where they run. I have to say they didn't have them at my studio where no. I was at. No, unfortunately not. But I think the system is used around the world. It is, yeah. yeah. Like a gold or bronze or silver medals. And that's a good way to kind of track your improvement and to get mm -hmm. some sort of... Um, Build on your understanding, I think. And yeah. to have it structured in a way that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. So I wish I had that, to be honest. A, a lot of the people in my studio went quite deep into that system where they started I think at bronze and then worked their way up um, and I actually did one medal only and then I went straight oh, into so competitions into yeah so I okay. I actually didn't spend much time mm -hmm. in That's that system we both didn't do that but that was mostly because I even I was already quite young only quite young at that point that I recognized that if I wanted to get better I needed to put myself in a, an environment where maybe I was in direct competition with other people which is kind of more advanced than just doing solo middles mm. and I definitely think that helped me that when you when you're uh, up against people that are better than you that have got more experience than maybe slightly older or doing it longer that definitely helps to speed up your rate of improvement mm. what about you so my first dance lesson, um, as we mentioned, was a group class. I remember that it was um, just a big hall. Uh, had I think it was related to like a soccer club or a football club. So they had like they had big sporting grounds out the back. Um, but I walked into the class. And I remember very clearly it was cha cha that we learnt first. I think that's a pretty common dance that you learn first um, because it's very very structured and kind of an easy pattern to follow. And I remember. And to do by yourself. True, yeah. yeah. Um, so they had like a lineup of the men and then a lineup of the, the women or the boys and the girls at that age. Um, and we, I remember, um, so when you count cha cha, a lot of you would know this it's two, three, four, and one. And so um, often, just to make it a little bit more fun, people will say two, three, cha cha, one. Um, but my teacher at the time, I remember this so clearly on my first lesson. Uh, was finding names um, that kind of worked with the three syllables. So I remember we went through um, two, three, A, B, C, two, three, A, B, C, but then we also switched to two, three, Talissa, because I have three syllables in my name. So the whole class was singing my name, and I remember that very, very clearly. But which is a very funny story. Um, maybe why I liked it so much, but. Um, I very much like Jonathan, remember that I was definitely not the best person in the class. I remember the class were all beginners. Um, I don't think anyone had really had any experience dancing before. Mm -hmm. um, and I definitely felt like maybe it took me a little bit longer to pick up things. I, there was definitely, and I still remember to this day, there was definitely a girl there who was um, much much better than me I think she picked it up much quicker than me um, and I think she was just maybe naturally um, more inclined to understand it a bit better than me um, and I remember she was a lovely girl we became really good friends but um, in the end she didn't end up going down the competition scene and you see you know um, almost 20 years later I'm still in this this dancing world, uh, it just goes to show, I think, you don't have to be exactly what Jonathan said. You don't have to be naturally talented or um, have the, the gift of, of dance the day you step through the doors. It is something that's learnt and something that evolves um, and something that you can build on. But I do, what I do remember is that I instantly loved it. I loved um, I don't know what it was. I, I know a lot of people say they fall in love with the dresses. I wasn't exposed to the dresses at that point. Yeah. I definitely, I didn't see any of the costumes. I didn't know about competitions. Um, I just knew that I enjoyed it. Maybe it was more the social side of things. I liked that it was quite a big class. Um, yeah. So it's a nice, I think group classes are a nice way to introduce yourself to ballroom dancing. I would definitely recommend that. I think also a very important um, factor is kind of self-analysis and, and even from a young age 
I think I knew that I didn't just want to be dancing because I enjoyed dancing, that I knew that I wanted to be good at it. Um, and I knew that I wanted to compete and I knew that I wanted to win competitions. And I think not everyone is like that, uh, but there are a lot of people exactly like that, and like me when I was that age or at that level of dancing. So I think that if you just want to have some fun and you just want to do it socially, that's perfectly fine and you can actually stay in that group environment and stay in that metal system and do the social dancing and that world of dancing is very much um, okay. So it's, yeah, I mean, if you want to do more, then there are always avenues to do more. So if you want to make yourself the happiest that you can. In the background. <laughs> yeah, if you want to make yourself the happiest, then you have to know what you want. And then if you can communicate that to your teacher, maybe yeah. say, I just want to have fun or I want to get better. And then your teacher can help direct your lessons better to suit what you want. Yeah, I think that's exactly it. You have to figure out the go your goals. You have to figure out your goals and um, maybe it is, um, you don't have to actually want to be the best dancer in the world to do a competition as well. Um, it could be simply that you want to nail a competition. I know that um, now that I'm thinking about where I was in that first lesson and who I was as a 10 year old girl, I was actually um, really quite reserved. I was really um, a, a really quiet, quiet person. I, I wouldn't be able to, definitely wouldn't be able to speak to a camera or um, teach a group class like I would now or, or uh, lecture a crowd of people, present myself to an audience, a stadium full of people uh, and dancing has really developed that skill, those skills within myself. Um, so I think that dancing can give you a lot. Uh, you can have different goals depending on where you're at but um, it also might surprise you and give you things that you never thought you would ever develop. Mm -hmm. Alright well I think we'll leave it there for our first dance lesson story. Um, hopefully you learned something about uh, our first experience and maybe it's similar to your experience if you already had you've already been through that yourself. I'd love, we'd love to hear any of your stories, whether you started with a group class or, or what your, your story really was on um, coming into this forum dancing industry. Please uh, like the video and subscribe to our channel if you want to see more videos. And hopefully we might be sharing some more stories soon. <laughs> see you later.